let's talk about wheels and tires and hopefully this video is able to help you out so the first thing we're going to talk about is wheel casting so there's regular casting and then there's machining which is the second one and the third one is forging so casting is going to be your weakest machining is going to be your second strongest and forging is going to be the strongest out of the three so here in this picture you can see the difference in uh, the casting cost so basically a basic cast will run you around eight hundred dollars a flow formed cast I mean a flow formed with a flow formed with a face cast which is the wheel I went with is somewhere around the middle so what it basically is is they have a flat piece of aluminum that they machine flat and so the choice I went with is the flow formed barrel with the face cast so what they do is they have a flat piece of aluminum and they basically shape it into the barrel and then your other one is going to be the machine which is they have a solid block of aluminum pretty much and machine a wheel from there and then your most expensive one that's going to run you about 4k is uh, three piece forge wheels which is going to be your most expensive so companies like CCW or HRE wheels that you see on a lot of expensive cars So the next thing when you're choosing a wheel is figure out the offset. So I put the, my numbers in here and you could tell it barely moved any but uh, i link this website down below so you guys can figure out if you'll run into any issues that will rub against the fender or your fender liners. And next thing is let's talk about tires. So tires, there's different brands pretty much. This is only a couple. You have anywhere from the Lionhearts, which is like super low, all the way up to the Pirellis and Michelins. And I chose Federals because uh, these are gonna be expendable wheels and yeah, <laughs> wheels get expensive really quickly. And you also have to figure out which one's uh, going to fit your budget and which one's the right one for you. So sometimes you just can't have the best, just like with anything. And let's talk about tread wear. Let's talk about tread wear grade. So anything 300 and above is your basic uh, passenger tire. And then 200 is your occasional track slash autocross car, which you don't drive in the rain. And then your last one is the 100 treadwear tire. So this is for specifically pretty much a race car. You do not want to be driving this in the rain or snow. So, I mean, I had some friends that ran the Toyota r Triple Eights in the rain and they told me it's pretty much you're on ice skates. So once you get your tire and wheel combo, what you're gonna want to do, you don't have to do it, is put it in this calculator because once you change the diameter of the wheel it's also going to change the speedometer reading so these are my numbers right here and you can only tell that it only changes by 0.5 percent so which is really not a big deal and pretty much the speedometer is still reading true uh, I heard of people like recalibrating theirs but I didn't want to go through that all right hey guys so today we're unveiling something pretty big it's gonna be the wheels that are coming on this car here they are flow one race spec uh, f4s they're 20 by 10s in the rear and then it's uh, 19 by eight and a half in the front and what we're doing to wrap this is we have the federal ft1s and if you want to know how to read a tire I'll let you know right now. All right guys, so this is how you read a tire. So 285 is gonna be the width of the tire. Next number, 30, is gonna be 30% 30 of 285. So, so that's how thick your uh, sidewall is. And 20 is the size of your wheel or rim. And then 99 is gonna be your load rating, how much weight this tire can handle. And Y is gonna be your speed rating. 
So I chose these Federal ST1s actually because they were like the best bang for your buck and I mean they look pretty good if you ask me so all right let's get these mounted and I'll see you guys after so I drove my car back yesterday after I got my wheels mounted and the power steering started to leak again so what I had to do was take this out and the alternator to got the reservoir and it started leaking from the bolt I literally can't get to if it was this one I'd be able to get it with the crow foot but I don't want to remove the fan again take out the ABS and all that so right now I have to grind a tool to be able to fit because this is barely like able to clear it like I need to grind down I need to grind down like this much so this is able to turn and that's what I'm gonna do right now Alright, so I was finally able to tighten it by grinding this part right here and also around the corners. But damn, that was way too, I don't know what GM was thinking when they put that there, but yeah, it was way too hard to get in there. Hopefully that's tight now because I triple and quadruple checked. So now it's time to put everything back together and show you guys the wheels. <laughs> 